Hello all, welcome to my CISSP last minute review and today we are going to discuss about domain 1 security and risk management. Now let me give you a high level idea about this particular series. In this particular series we are going to discuss about the high, high level important areas that you need to consider while you are preparing for CISSP exam. And today I thought I will cover the domain 1 security and risk management. I am going to cover the small part of that. My name is Prab Nair and you can refer my LinkedIn profile for more information. So risk management is something is a driving factor for any organization. When you hire anyone, when you fire anyone, when you acquire any technology, when you discontinue any technology, we do risk assessment. Even doing a changes in the policy, we drive by the risk assessment. 100% risk cannot be eliminated, so ultimate goal of a risk management is to mitigate the risk to an acceptable level. But it is not about only risk management, we have some other principles, practices that we need to understand in this domain. Those who are preparing for this exam, make sure you should have a good understanding of a domain 1 because that is the base for all other domains. Because 50 to 70 percent of the questions in the exam is quite testable based on the risk assessment only. I can give you a live example like if you wish to change any kind of a firewall from stateless to stateful, what is the first thing we have to do? Risk assessment. If you are planning to change from SAML to OAuth and OpenID, what is the first thing we have to do? Risk assessment. So that is why this domain play a very important role for your preparation. So the first part of this domain is called as a Understand and apply the concept of confidentiality, integrity and availability. See security is always driven by the CIA. My information always remain confidential that is my primary preference. It must be remain accurate that is my another preference and it must be available whenever it required. So that is the true principle of information security. But how to maintain confidentiality, how to maintain integrity, how to maintain uh, uh, availability. So we have a different kind of a principle. So under the confidentiality, uh, we have example like, uh, just give me a second. Now in the confidentiality, we have a different kind of a principles like we have access control. We have a principle of least privilege and we have a need to know. Any important areas which talking about need to know principle of least privilege. This is basically introduced to achieve the confidentiality. Integrity, hashing, separation of duty, dual control and your parity. These are basically part of the integrity and availability we have a BCP, we have a DR, we have a RAID, we have a load balancers. These are basically the solutions by which we can able to maintain the information whenever it requires. It must be available by these kind of a solutions. So it is very important for you to understand the CIA and what are the solutions and principles are available by which we can able to achieve CIA. Opposite of CIA is DAD, D A D. Disclosure, alterations and destruction. Opposite of a confidentiality is disclosure. Opposite of integrity is alteration and opposite of availability is destruction. Okay. So that is an opposite of CIA and information security governance. Their primary objective is to maintain the CIA of the assets. The second part of this particular domain, which is called as a evaluate and apply security governance. See when you're talking about the security governance, let me give you one high level idea. So governance is basically all about set of operations. Okay. So you are working in one particular company and the companies reside in state and state is reside in the country. So country need to be operated by some bureaucrats, officers and all that. It is always driven by the rules, regulations, policies and everything. So that is called as a governance. So governance is all about set of operations. Question is why we need a governance. That is a good question. Example, you are going to the house. You have some rules and regulations. Who created those rules and regulations? Dad and mom, right? Why they want to maintain the discipline? Why they want a discipline to protect your life, to protect your 
life from all kind of threats and everything make sure they should maintain some kind of a uniformity that is the example of a governance right same like in the organization if you want all kind of things to be done effectively they introduce a policy procedures and guidelines they introduce the organization structure so all those things basically part of the governance under the governance the first part is basically called as the enterprise governance okay a group of people who basically drive the organization which is called as a board they are the one who basically approve the policies under the enterprise governance we have a two things one is called as a it governance and one is basically called as a information security governance it governance their primary objective is to drive the it operation and information security governance their primary objective is to drive the information security in the organization their ultimate goal is to build the security their ultimate goal is to reduce the risk to an acceptable level so enterprise governance bring the business to protect the business we have a information security governance and prepare the technology strategy according to business requirement that is a part of the it governance so that is basically called as a security governance and functions i used to cover much in detail in my session so that right now i'm just giving a high level overview so that's why we say evaluate and apply the security governance principle in cssp we covering the security governance only what is the most important thing about the security governance anything you introduce it should map with the business strategy goals missions and objective example you introducing a firewall make sure it should be under the cost which is as per the business requirement you introducing any kind of a encryption solution make sure it should meet the business requirement a good security strategy is the one which basically align with the business objective remember this point from the exam point of view when we say effective security governance effective security strategy only and only way to validate this governance and strategy if it's basically mapped with the business objective if i'm introducing any kind of a security solution in the organization it must meet the business strategy then only it is called as a effective security governance how to achieve that i used to cover in my session second part is basically called as a organizational process we need to understand the role of a security governance role of a security governance in the organization process what is the role of an security governance during an acquisition example company is planning to acquire the another organization what is the role of a security officer he will assess the new risk new threat new compliance issues that we are basically going to face when we going to acquire the organization if the organization is going to be divisions into two parts or into three parts what is the role of a security governance ensure that okay data should not be disclosed to unauthorized user building of the governance committee that is basically part of the security governance what is a, so that that play a very important role another important thing budget another important thing uh, uh, role of a indirect people like network administrator security administrator system administrators so this is how the security governance play a very important role in the organization process the next part is basically called as a roles and responsibility definitely you need to have a good understanding of data owner and data custodian Gov organization structure or organization responsibility uh, is a very important part of the governance structure so data owner is accountable for data and data custodian will basically manage data on behalf of data owner example like we we bring one business to the organization so we have a dedicated sales person for that he is a business owner and we are the security officer who basically ensure the appropriate security for that particular data so we are a data custodian you also need to understand the role of a ciso in the organization one thing you need to remember is ciso should report as high as possible in the organization because of two reason one maintain the visibility and second is transparency and third by this we can able to uh, present the information security directly to the board okay it can basically discard all the uh, all the information which is basically passed through multiple layer so two biggest reason is maintain the visibility and limit all kind of a distortion another important thing uh, you need to understand to build the security governance we have a different kind of a frameworks Uh, the first part is basically called here is called as a NIST is there. NIST is a standard and framework that we can use. Corbett is basically a framework we can use. Coso is a framework we can use by which we can able to build the security governance. See, it's your call. Either you can build your security governance by your thought process, or you can refer some kind of a industry benchmark. It is easy for us to follow the industry benchmark by which we can able to build the security governance. But don't worry, in the exam they will not going to test in detail about security governance framework. But yes, 
you need to have a good understanding of a PCI DSS, their 12 controls, their ultimate goal of a PCI DSS, remember, is confidentiality. PCI DSS is a standard, but not mandatory. All payment card industry services who are accepting a credit cards, they basically need to be comply with the PCI DSS standards, which come with the 12 requirement. No need to go through each and every requirement, but you need to have a high level understanding. These are the 12 requirements, which is a part of a PCI DSS. Another important thing is called as a due care and due diligence. Okay, so due care and due diligence is one of the important topic we have and I have seen couple of folks always struggle with due care and due diligence. I would like to give a brief, brief idea. Okay, one example of a due care and due diligence. If you can see the word due care and due diligence, due, due diligence is basically has a larger character than due care. I can give you an example. I go for I'm looking for a CSSP training. See, it is my responsibility to complete CSSP. So it is my due care. It's my responsibility, right? It's my responsibility to complete the due care. But in order to pursue the CSSP, I have to do all my checks to make sure I'm correcting, my, I'm taking a new right resources. So that is basically my due diligence. So if I'm enrolling with any CSSP training program, I have to verify whether the trainer is certified. I have to verify whether the trainer is accredited. I have to verify whether the resources are correct because I'm going to follow that, right? So that is my due diligence, act of investigation. That is called due diligence. So once you basically agree on those requirements, then you basically follow his duties. You're going to follow the guidelines. You're going to follow the uh, the instructions from the instructor. Okay, I need to read this, need that. So that is called your due care. So before involving in any training program is your due diligence to check everything. And once you enroll, follow their guidelines and all that, that is your due care. One more example I can give you, implementing a patch, that is your due care. But verifying the patch, whether it is correct, that is your due diligence. So that is a high level example I have given you about the due care and due diligence. This is all in my first part of the series and I will try my best to make other, other, other sections also in detail. So summary is good understanding of a CIA, confidentiality, integrity, availability, under the confidentiality, access control, principle of least privilege, need to know under the integrity, hashings, uh, checksum, dual control, Separation duty under the availability is all about load balancer, BCP and DR. Information security play a very important role. It must be available whenever it required. It remain confidential. It remain confidential whenever it required and make sure information always remain accurate. Okay. Second part we have discussed about evaluate and apply the security governance principle. In this, we discussed about three type of governance. First is enterprise governance. Under the enterprise governance, we have IT governance and we have a security governance. A good security governance is the one whose strategy should be aligned with the business objectives. Then we discuss about the role of a security governance in the organizational processes, example, acquisition and divestitures and governance committee. If organization is planning to acquire another organization, role of a security governance to do the assessment of the new organization, assessing a threat, emerging risk and everything. If organization is going to be split into two organizations or going to exit the market, make sure information should not be available to unauthorized user. You need to have a good understanding of a data owner and data custodian. Owner is accountable for data. Custodian is basically responsible for data protection. What is the role of a CISO? He must maintain the high level position because of two reasons. One is visibility and discard all informations. And next is that if you want to build the governance, you need a framework. Good understanding of a COSO, NIST is required, but not in detail. Good understanding of a PCI DSS is required because it has a 12 requirement that is quite testable in the exam. Along with that ultimate goal of a PCI DSS is to maintain the confidentiality of a data. And last part is due care and due diligence. Care is the implementation. Diligence is basically the investigation. This is your friend Prab Nair. For more information, you can subscribe my YouTube channel and you can connect me on LinkedIn and Instagram. Thank you. Bye.